In this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to algebraic proofs. And so you can see here that we have two columns set up. We have statements and we have reasons. And so a two column proof is what we're going to include with a solution to an equation. So we're just gonna solve this equation. But for every single step that we take in our path to a solution, we need to give a justification or a reason to you know, what we're doing, so step by step. And these algebraic proofs end up being a great introduction for your geometric proofs that are much more rigorous. And so it gives you an opportunity to practice justifying what you're doing and why you're doing it. Okay, so what are some of these reasons that we're going to use? Well, the first one is probably the easiest, and you'll see this in geometry as well. This equation is the equation we're going to solve, and what's the reason? Well, it's been given to us, so we're going to write given. Okay, well, how about some other ones? Well, it looks like we have some parentheses in here, so we can distribute through there, and then we'll have some, you know, expressions that are equal to each other. We can simplify those as much as we can. And then the big ones are going to be properties of equality. So we have an addition property of equality, subtraction property of equality, multiplication and division as well. And those just state, and you've done this many times before in solving equations, that when you add one value to one side of an equation, you must do it to the other side for the equation to stay nice and equal. And then of course, after we use a property of equality, we'll be simplifying. Okay, so pretty much those are our choices. So let's go ahead and get to work and see what we have. So this equation has been given to us, and as we said already, it has some parentheses. So let's start by, you know, distributing, and we'll get rid of those parentheses. Here it's a positive eight that we'll be distributing across this binomial, and here it's being subtracted, so really it's a minus one that we'll be distributing across this binomial. So let's go ahead and do that distribution and see what we have. So one minus 13 in, that just comes along for the ride. Eight times two is 16. Eight times negative three is negative 24, and the n comes along. Five minus, so the negative one times the seven, and the negative times a negative makes a positive 2n plus 6. So you can see that this equation now is just a little simpler than this one. And what have we done to go from here to here? Well, we use that distributive property. So our reasoning is just going to be distributive property. Okay, so you see that wasn't bad at all. You're just writing down what you're doing. Okay, well, how about now? Well, remember that an equation is just going to be two expressions that are set equal to one another, and it looks like each one of these expressions in and of itself can be simplified a bit, so we'll do that. So it looks like we have some like terms. So this 1 plus 16, that'll make a 17, and the negative 13n minus 24n, that looks like it's going to be a negative 37n, so that'll equal... And then let's combine terms here. 5 minus 7 is, uh, let's see, negative 2 plus 6 is 4, and then plus 2n. So we have now simplified each of these expressions. And how did we do that? Well, we just combined like terms. So let's go ahead and write that. Combine like terms. Okay, once again, not bad at all. So here we are, and you'll see this equation, again, is just a little simpler than the one before. So what can we do? Well, it looks like each side of this equation has a variable and a number, a variable and a number. So we need to decide on which side should we collect our variable terms and on which side should we collect our numeric terms or our constants. And the n over here is a negative 37n and the one over here is a positive two. So let's go ahead and collect our n terms or our variable terms on the right side where they will be positive. So we can do that by using inverse operations, okay? So this n is a negative 37n, or you can say I'm subtracting a 37n from the 17. So the inverse operation to subtraction will be, well, addition. So we're going to add 37n to both sides of this equation. And so what makes this possible? Well, we had mentioned previously, we have a nice property for this. This is called the addition property of equality. Now, 
Okay, addition property of equality. So we're adding the same term to both sides of the equation to ensure that everything stays nice and equal. So now what do we do? Well, we can go ahead and cancel those guys out. So we'll just add straight down. So it looks like 17 equals 4 plus, and we have 2n plus 37n, so 39n. And what do we do here? Well, we actually did that addition. So we're going to call this step simplify. And you'll see after you use a property of equality, you're typically going to need to simplify. Okay, so here we are now, this equation, a little simpler than the one before. So 17 equals 4 plus 39n. Well, our variable terms are uh, together, and they're on that right side. So it looks like we just need to get rid of this 4, or get it over here with the 17. So the 4 right now is positive. So what we need to do is the opposite of a positive, so we need a negative. So we're going to subtract 4 from both sides. And what reasoning makes this possible? Well, it's another property of equality, and in fact, it's going to be the subtraction property of equality. Because whatever we do to one side, we do to the other, and we subtracted a value, so we need to do it to both sides. So subtraction, property of equality. You'll see these fours will cancel when I add or subtract, in our case, uh, straight down vertically. So 17 minus 4 is 13 equals, well, that 39n is left over there by itself. So what step did we use to do this subtraction? Well, simplify. Okay, looks like we're almost there. So we have 13 equals 39n. So in an effort to get this n all by itself, we see that 39 is being multiplied by the n. So what's the inverse operation of multiplication? Well, division. So let's divide both sides of our equation by 39. And what property of equality will this be? Eh, you guessed it, the division property of equality. Okay, and then after we use the property of equality, what should we do? Yeah, let's go ahead and simplify. So how will this simplify? Well, the 39s will cancel, so just my n is by itself on the right side. And I have 13 divided by 39, which will actually simplify nicely to one-third when I reduce that fraction. And so one more consideration that we can make, we have one-third equals n. Well, a lot of students like to see this variable on the left side instead of the right side. So let's just switch them and say n equals one-third. Well, can we do that? What makes that possible? Well, we have a property called the symmetric property of equality. And that just says, if the two sides of an equation are equal to one another, well, then we can substitute one for the other or exchange them like that. So I took the left side and put it on the right and the right side and put it on the left. And that's called our symmetric property of equality. Okay, so let's step back through what we did here. So we have our two column algebraic proof. On the left are our statements, and we just have this equation, and we worked it out and solved it, so we see that n equals one third. And on the right side are our reasons, or the justification for every single step that we did along the way in the uh, solution, or the process of finding this solution for n. And once again, this is a great way to prepare you for the more rigorous proofs that you're going to be seeing in geometry. So here it is, solving equations with algebraic proofs.